bacon is not the reason you haven't stopped eating meat. Cheese is not calling to you from the refrigerator. Creme brulee, it just sits there. The reason you eat animal products, even when you've decided you want to move to a vegan or whole food, plant-based diet to lower or even eliminate your risk of many chronic health conditions, well, the reason is never the food. Before you tell yourself one more time that you could go vegan or plant-based except for giving up whipped cream or bacon or smoked mozzarella, fill in the blank. I want you to know that it's completely possible. I'm giving you permission. Permission to go plant-based except for bacon. To go vegan except for cheese. To go whole food plant-based except for the one or the two or the five things you tell me you can't give up. And if you're thinking that still eating bacon or cheese is not succeeding at plant-based eating, that it's failing at being vegan, I have news for you. Failure is totally an option. Hello, Veg Heads. You're listening to Veg Your Best, the plant based podcast. My name is Michelle Olander. I'm a certified life coach, a practicing vegan, and I'm here to try and convince you every week to show up, eat more plants, and not wait a single second longer to set an impossible goal, whatever that is for you. And this is episode 16, where I'm going to try and sell you on a little failure. You know, sometimes, sometimes it feels like there is a kind of constant argument like this happening in our heads. What to do, what not to do. What to eat, what not to eat. Who we are, who we want to be, back and forth, endlessly. And much of the time, depending on how much airtime we give it, One side is clearly winning and then assembling the evidence and presenting more and more evidence of how the argument is true. This ongoing argument is the collection of thoughts, your kind of primitive part of your brain. Well, it presents it as the case for or against something. You know, like in the old cartoons, we think of it as that little devil and a little angel, one on each shoulder. But the truth is, it's all you, only you. A whole courtroom drama may be rolling out in your head as your primitive change-averse brain argues with your more challenge-loving prefrontal cortex. We have complicated brains. One part of our brain may argue that this should be happening faster, that we should be succeeding at our goal, that it should feel easier to eat plant-based, and that it's not really fair we can't eat like everyone else does. Or it's not fair that it's easier for some people to eat plant-based, and maybe we're just not suited to it. Or that we are failures. That's the one I love. When my clients say to me, I think I might fail at this, I cannot think of one single solitary worthwhile thing that doesn't involve failure. What if failure just wasn't really a problem? I mean, did it happen at school or at home? We've talked about my mom in some earlier podcasts. She was an exacting person, and she had a way of interpreting B-minus work. B-minus work is incidentally the level of achievement I encourage my clients to aim at when they are learning new things, when they're trying new things. B-minus. Well, from an academic point of view, 
my mother considered B minus to be an indication that you had failed 20% of the material. So that's a point of view. But if we aren't failing a certain percentage of the time, it just means maybe we're not trying anything very challenging, don't you think? But I hear you, you have an intention to stop eating animal products or to lower your level of inflammation or your cholesterol, but you still find yourself eating meat, cheese, and eggs maybe now and again. Your brain may find this troubling. <laughs> so instead of thinking, yes, I am learning new things, new habits, new tastes, new methods, your brain might just say, no, I can't do this. Look, I'm failing. I'm failing. But our thoughts about failing are usually so negative, so unpleasant, so uncomfortable that we immediately start looking for another explanation. And then as if flailing around looking for this explanation, your brain will likely cherry pick all the evidence that supports your brain's view that this is impossible. I mean, your brain must need to eat bacon, right? Otherwise, you wouldn't be craving it. Or that you must need a lot more calcium, otherwise creme brulee wouldn't be so tempting. Or protein. Your brain says you must be protein deficient. That's why, that's why you really needed to order that cheese on your sandwich. If this were the right way for me to eat, your brain says, if it were the right way to eat, it wouldn't be so hard. My body must need the meat, the cheese, the eggs. My body must need it. Maybe, or maybe, maybe it's just the beginning. Maybe you're just new at this. Maybe failing a little is just the way learning works. Maybe my B minus is me failing 20% of the material. Maybe though, maybe your bacon or creme brulee or egg sandwich is just the 20% you haven't mastered that indicates the 80% that you have. You know, Marcus Aurelius, stoic alert, Marcus Aurelius is always a good one to read on the subject of never letting a good failure go to waste. Quoting, do not think that what is difficult to master is humanly impossible. Instead, think that if it is humanly possible, it is within reach. It's just a slightly different way of looking at it. And personally, I don't see any real benefit in making the parts of your food choices that still include some animal products a problem. But if your brain wants to call it a failure, I'm cool with that. And failure is totally an option. Failure is an option when you're learning a new language or learning a new job or learning a new route to work, or learning to use a pressure cooker. Ask me how I know that. Or how to get split pea soup off the ceiling and the light fixtures. Ask me how I know. Listen, even if you are a US Navy SEAL with a tattoo that says failure is not an option, well, that's the mission statement for the operation, not for the training. U.S. Navy SEALs are put through endless scenarios so that the failures all happen in the drill and the preparation and the practice. Learning is by definition failing forward. You know, a good teacher, a good course, a good program is just the right balance of impossible and possible. Possible enough that you can make some headway, make some traction, and just impossible enough to stretch you, to challenge you, to make you want to do more, and then periodically feel that sense of accomplishment 
and pride along the way. And that's what deliberate practice is. That's what a coach can help with most. Deliberate practice is a certain type of practice which is purposeful and systematic. Deliberate. Deliberate and aimed at specifically improving your results. Deliberate practice with a coach allows you to stay focused on your desired outcome. And as a coach, I can help you see the small errors that you might be repeating and the opportunities that exist to consistently improve. The natural tendency of the human brain, mine, yours, everyone's, is to turn repeated behaviors into automatic habits. And that works for you as well as against you. So deliberate practice always follows the pattern of, one, break the overall process down into parts. Two, identify the weaknesses or the obstacles or challenges. Three, test new strategies for each section. And four, integrate the whole process by evaluating it regularly. So one, break the overall process down into the parts. Two, identify the weaknesses, the obstacles, and challenges. Three, test new strategies for each section. And four, integrate the process by evaluating it regularly. And doing the process is not always comfortable. And our brains can suddenly decide, no, discomfort, discomfort, warning, failure, quit. But with a coach on your side, it can actually be an opportunity to feel that discomfort warning signal and sense failure without quitting. Without quitting. Every client looking to move to a plant-based or a vegan diet comes with a different level of comfort eating greens, grains, beans, fruits, mushrooms, and seeds. And as a coach, I can help my clients ditch the foods and the food habits that can make the most difference. And I can be there to remind them when they feel failure that it's just one small, totally necessary part of the process. Failures just show us where the work still is. And if you don't quit when you feel some failure, that is a win. If you've been eating a standard Western diet or even a high quality omnivore diet, you know exactly how to eat the way you already eat. If you knew exactly how you were going to eat whole food, plant-based or vegan, my guess is you'd be eating that way right now. Notice, notice when your brain is arguing for things to be what you think they should be, you know? Our brain has a tendency to argue for weight loss and dietary change being hard, being impossible, because we haven't done it permanently before. Remember, we talked about that a couple weeks ago. Your brain arguing against change, arguing that this is, you know, just how we are. Or maybe your primitive brain argues that some discomfort is absolutely unbearable and it means that change is not a good idea. Or that it's unfair that we have to go through this. Or that it's too restrictive. Or that we don't have enough time to plan and our goals are just too far away. What happens in the courtroom of your mind? What does your brain argue for? Think about it. What arguments do you end up spending your time and energy presenting evidence for? What values do you find yourself defending with your thoughts and actions? And what objections are you making to your progress, to your capabilities and your potential? If you find you're spending your time arguing that limiting meat, dairy, and eggs is too hard, you are at the same time arguing against it being 
easy. If you're arguing for it being impossible, you're arguing against the possibility. And if you're arguing for this being just how you are, you are actually arguing against who you could be. If you're arguing for discomfort being unbearable, you're arguing against your capability to feel and to be strong. If you're arguing for it being unfair, you're arguing against it being a gift of learning and growth. If you're arguing that you don't have enough time to plan and take care of you, you may actually be arguing against the time and energy that you are worth. And if you're arguing for how far away your goal is, you are just arguing against this amazing human journey you're on to become the future you. Why? Why do we choose to spend so much time and energy arguing for our limitations. Imagine you were paying an attorney for all the hours spent litigating in the court of your mind. Brilliant use of your financial resources. Is that a cause you want to get behind? Imagine if instead we mounted, we mounted an offensive and we started arguing for our best health, our future goals, and our our possibilities, our possibilities for what might be instead of for what isn't. What could you create? You know, all this month, I've been posting a short video on Facebook as we veg your best through the holidays. And eating plant-based, eating vegan, it's no longer very challenging for me. It's not something I think about as a problem or that I think of as difficult anymore. And that wasn't always the case. What's hard for me right now is to go public and get on camera and try and draw attention to the benefits of you, of all of us, eating less meat, less dairy, fewer eggs, and eating more plants. So just because I no longer particularly struggle with the way I eat, and really I don't, But it doesn't mean I don't have a human brain that argues for my limitations all the time in the areas I want to grow in, in the challenges I want to rise to. Every day, multiple times a day, my brain tells me that the technology is too much, that I don't know how to get my message in front of the people who need it most. It argues that I don't speak well off look at that, that I don't speak well enough off the cuff and that I don't look good or know how to light myself in the videos. See, my brain has a lot of arguments. So I've been posting those Facebook videos and recording these weekly podcasts to help encourage you to veg your best through the holidays. And the message is that there is no big worthwhile change without failure. And failure is always totally an option. Don't let your brain argue against all the exciting growth and accomplishments that are available to you in this life. Your primitive brain argues. It just does. It's just there to scan the horizon for change. And change change generally meant the possibility of danger in the forests and the savannas where we evolved. But your frontal cortex... Your evolved higher brain is always the judge in the courtroom of your mind. You get to weigh all the evidence. And it's my belief that a coach can really help you introduce evidence that supports you, that supports your health and your goals. And it reinforces that knowledge with deliberate practice. And if that means you decide to keep a little bacon or creme brulee or mozzarella around once in a while for now, you could decide that that's a failure, or you could argue that failure is not only an option, it's the way forward. Remember Marcus Aurelius? The mind adapts and converts to its own purposes the obstacle to our acting. 
The impediment to action advances the action. What stands in the way becomes the way. What stands in the way becomes the way. Maybe bacon is not the impediment to your plant-based journey. Maybe it's actually just showing you the way. Veg Your Best podcast production, music, and editing by Charlie Weinshank. Thanks, Charlie. Before you go, it would mean so much to me and the Veg Your Best team if you would hit subscribe, leave us a five-star review, or share with someone you think might be interested. Something about algorithms, it helps bump us up a little in the rankings, and that's the best way to help others find the podcast and for us to find our audience. So until next week, make it easy and veg your best.